Hello everybody, welcome back to another Batman Miniature Game Battle Report 2nd Edition. This is 350 rep of a Brave and the Bold crew featuring some newly finished miniatures from the Dark Knight Rises starter set against a militia crew that's mostly just existing as an excuse to get the Batman Who Laughs on the table again. We'll probably change up the table layout to include some more new scenery next time on a, a slightly better table as well, ideally. But uh, let's look at the crews and get started. So even though this area has terrible lighting, uh, let's go over the Brave and the Bold crew being led by the Chris Nolan, Christian Bale, Batman from the Dark Knight Rises star set. This Batman focuses on being a master of stealth, in fact he has a rule called that. He can only be seen from up to six inches away, or within six inches, sorry. So he's being the boss of the crew. Then we have Arkham Guard 2 with his assault rifle. And then from the Dark Knight Rises star set we have Agent 3 and Agent 1, I think. Agent 3's just got the, the nightstick. And then the other agent has a pistol and, I think, cuffs. Then we've also got the Catwoman from the Dark Knight Rises box set, who has a pistol. And then we have as a fr the second free agent, because Catwoman's a free agent, the Red Hood. So as we're pointing out, this is technically an illegal crew because the funding for the crew comes to $1,700. And in a 350 rep game, the cap on funding is $1,500 unless you have a model like Harvey Dent or Alfred to give you a boost of $300 or $350. So it's technically not allowed, but the opposing crew has been given $1,700 of funding as well, and has used it all. So both crews are technically using too much funding, but they're both even, so that should hopefully balance out. In terms of objectives, Wintech, Ammo, Titan. And here's the 350 rep of Militia crew that's going to be going up against that Brave and the Bold crew, led by the Arkham Knight Scarecrow, although as we already know he's not particularly good. But, more importantly, the Batman Who Laughs will be joining this crew as a free agent. And then from the Militia Bat Box we have the Cybernetic Brute, the Medic, the Protective Shield Wielder, the Carbine Assault Rifle User, and the Missile Launcher Guy. With the extra funding available, the Cybernetic Brute has been given a Fear Gas Dispenser by Scarecrow. Uh, both, who, both Militia who have guns have an extra mag, even though a magazine wouldn't do anything for a rocket. He has an extra rocket, essentially to make them a bit more deadly, and the Cybernetic Bruce Brute also has a Titan Dose that does take them, plus all the weapons etc included, to 1700 funding as well, which again is illegal, it should be 1500 cap, but both sides are playing that so it should be okay. We're going to set up sword gratings and lampposts now and then decide the scenario. Totally forgot to mention the objectives for the militia side, contraband, medical and another ammo. So we're going to be playing scenario 4 again today, that's just the deploy objectives as and how you want. 8 inches of deployment on both ends for the enemy team, or, well, ally team and enemy team. And then uh, the objectives, bring me his head for killing the enemy leader or knocking him out by the end of the game, and teach him a lesson if you break, wipe out half of the total reputation value of the enemy uh, crew. So we come over here. The Militia have deployed on this end of the table, this long edge up to 8 inches, basically all clustered together around a sur grating, other than the rocket launcher using Militia member who's up there on the boxes, just barely. In terms of lamps, we've got one there, a sur grating and a lamp up there. Another lamp down here. Oh, in terms of objective for the Brave and the Bold, the Wayne Tech is there, the ammo is amongst them there, and the Titan is hidden right down there. Sur grating there, got a lamp here, in the square here we've got some lamps and sword gratings as well as well as most of the militia objectives. Contraband there, the medical here, and over this end of the building, next to Catwoman and one of the agents, Agent 3, I think, is their ammo also next to sword grating. Most of the Brave and the Bold have deployed up here, next to a lamp, next to sword grating on top of a building. And uh, as far as total numbers go, the Brave and the Bold have one less than the militia, so they'll have one pass they can take advantage of until the numbers are evened up. Let's go back around here and see who's getting first activation. Batman logo for the Brave and the Bold, obviously. Pink for Militia. The Brave and the Bold will be going first. So we got the game started with just a simple activation here with the Brave and the Bold. Agent 3 activated. He had started over here next to Catwoman and the Sword Grating and the enemy ammo. He opted to move right up to the wall here and crouch behind it made sure that he's not visible behind all this here to the rocket launcher gentleman over there on the box. Hopefully he'll be safe. Let's move on and see. A couple of militia activations to cover as the one past the Brave and the Bold had have been, has been used. The shield militia member just moved up 
kind of using the caravan and the truck here for cover, uh, the pass was used. So then the carbine op activated. He moved up and he opted to use his free magazine that he bought with funding to shoot this lamppost here. The reason he did that is because this rock launcher militia member was in the the radius, so he was lit up. And although most of the guns on the Raven Bold side are either short range or otherwise, the assault rifle is unlimited range if you can see his target, so it's just to keep him a little bit safe. Was that worth using the spare ammo that cost 200 funding or 100 funding, whatever it was? Who knows? But Brave and the Bold have to activate next, so back over to them. Arkham Guard 2 activated for the Brave and the Bold, moved forwards away from the Sir Graying, right up to the corner of the building, and he crouched, even though I think that might be too low to, to benefit from an additional ping, or a ping at all. Either way, he is overlooking the street, perched, ready to fire. He couldn't see anybody, but he didn't have uh, the desire to take a shot anyway. Uh, then I went back over to the militia, but there was more posturing on this side too. The rocket launcher op activated, he moved forwards ever so slightly, barely half an inch just to the front of the box, just to give him that extra bit of range down the street as well. Kind of both teams keeping that main area just covered, just waiting for someone to come into view. So back to the Brave and the Bold again. Red Hood activated next and moved and then back clawed his way over to this building here. He then crouched next to the barrier here, although None of these people down here have any line of sight. He might, but he's obviously already activated this activation. Uh, the militia then activated the cybernetic brute who just kind of followed in the path of Solomon Grundy from that last match. Might end up the same way, but what else could he do really? Sorry about the lighting again here as well. Awkward time of day. Anyway, so the cybernetic brute is hiding under there. So now it's just up to the Brave and the Bold to either activate Batman or Catwoman and then back over to the militia for... Oh, and the other uh, agent police officer. And then the militia still have the Batman Who Laugh, Scarecrow, and the Medic. So Agent 1 activated and moved up the street and is crouching behind the contraband that isn't hers, but she's at least holding on to it and crouching. Unfortunately, she is in the AOE of that lamp there, so she's lit up, but she is poised to get a good shot down the street. In response, the militia just activated the Medic and had him follow behind the cybernetic brute to keep him alive. Keep on trying to do that and it never works out, but oh well. <laughs> So now Catwoman or Batwoman, Batwoman, Batman, and then the Batman Who Laughs or Scarecrow. Catwoman activated next and she's just as fast as the Red Hood. Four movement counters can be applied to her maximum. So she went over here, she hopped the wall for a uh, hindered movement for an extra inch and ended up right there next to Sir Graying, getting very close to the Titan container. Scarecrow activated after that for the militia. He just moved up behind the caravan here following after his hired goons, hopefully either to support them or have him be protected by them. So now all that's left is the two bat persons on the board. So for the final two activations of Battle Round 1, the Christian Bale Batman had to activate first and he was in a bit of a predicament because he was next to Sir Graying on that roof there. The Batman who laughs still had to go so leaving that roof kind of exposes Arkham Guard to a bit of problems but also the ammo is next to, as in the, the militia's ammo is right next to Sir Graying as well which would give up three points. In the end, he opted not to take a sewer. He was going to teleport to this sewer. However, that would make him illuminated by that light. He's actually very fast, this Batman. He's got four movement counters as well. So he just moved and backclawed up to here as well, next to the Red Hood, out of the AOE of the lamp and away from the edge there. The Batman who laughs, then predictably, just took a sewer grating and is now claiming the militia's ammo. Very unlikely he's going to stay claiming it because that's not what he's for, but it's going to give them a leg up as we go into the recap for turn one. So at the end of battle round one there isn't too much to cover because with the map being as it is and the deployment being as it is there was a lot of positioning for what's going to be a busy battle round two I feel and as we discussed the only victory points gained this turn was the Batman who laughs holding the ammo for three victory points for the militia so they take an early head start but things are about to get very very messy. Let's see who's going to get first activation. It's more likely to be the militia but not necessarily. Let's go for this counter, and this counter is... Oh! The Brave and the Bold will be getting first activation in Battle Round 2 as well. So to get us started, Battle Round 2, Catwoman activated first for the Brave and the Bold. She has a lot of movement, she has acrobatic as well. She hopped all the way over to claim the Titan objective for the Brave and the Bold. She crouched behind it, and despite being reduced to rate of fire 1, she shot her pistol once into the rocket launcher militia member, did one blood, one stun, and knocked him down. Not literally, but you know, he, he's on the floor, but he didn't fall off the grates, crates rather. Uh, he hasn't activated, so he does still have a, a chance to retaliate in some fashion. We'll see who militia decide to go with. 
the Batman Who Laughs activated next and he has a rule called sneaking where at the end of a battle round he gets to sneak two inches from where he ended his activation so we retroactively applied that. That meant that he didn't need as much in movement as he had but luckily he has the Joker rule which is called Trickster so he can reallocate his counters when he activates however he pleases so he just took a couple out of uh, movement because he didn't need them. Hopped on over here to Agent 3 or 1, whichever agent this is from Dark Knight Rises. He had three defense dice which helped a bunch so only one little bite from the Tooth and Claws got through for one blood and one stun. He has five endurance I believe those, those agents do from that box. Militia Soldier 3 activated and stood up and there's an interesting little rules clarification. Does standing up from being knocked down count as moving for the purposes of firing a weapon with aim? He technically didn't move, he just stood up, so we're counting it that he didn't move and can fire. So he shot his free rocket essentially, because he, he bought a plus one magazine before the match started. Shot it at Agent 1 over there and exploded her for three blood. So she's hurting a little bit now, she has five endurance as well. Red Hood activated next and he leapt down onto the platform, onto the street. Then over here with his whatever 13, 14 inches in total he can move if you include four movement counters, base movement and acrobatic. So he's now hiding behind this car, exposing himself a little bit but maybe he's wanting the enemy force to split up a little and that's why he, he did that. Over to the militia again now. The cybernetic brute activated and charged forwards. His weapons have reach so although he's not base to base he did attack agent... Let's get this sorted. Agent 1 or agent 3? She is Agent 1. Number 1 with a gun. That's the way to remember it. Either way, he whiffed. He only had two attacks with how his counters are spaced out. Uh, one whiffed entirely and then she blocked the other with a defence dice, or last remaining defence dice as well, worth noting. But she's still alive. He's not touching the contraband either. So let's see what happens. A quick addendum that we totally forgot that contraband is not a owning players only thing. So when uh, Agent 1 with a gun ended her movement next to it, she was controlling it at the end of battle round one, therefore she should have got a roll on it. So we've done that retroactively now, got a four which is two victory points and then plus one to hit and damage rolls for this activation only. Uh, that still keeps the militia out in front but only by one victory point instead of three. And activated next, he swooped down from the building with his back cape right behind the medic and disallowed any blocks because of sneak attack and that just means if they couldn't see Batman before he engaged them they can't use block dice. He did a very nice six stun and knocked out the medic who has four endurance. Uh, it's worth pointing out this Batman also has combo and arm very similarly to like the Darnate Rises Bane. So he has knocked out. He could have arrested him but didn't have the, the tokens applied to actually initiate the arrest. I think this might be the only Batman with the arrest ability which is pretty powerful considering all Batman <laughs> tend to use unarmed combat more or less, except the, the few fringe cases. Anyway, so that is a henchman knocked out. Not made a casualty, just knocked out. Back over to the militia now. So knowing that Batman is close and knowing that he himself isn't particularly threatening, Scarecrow decided a tactical retreat was in order. He fled back the way, activated the sewer, so that's the one militia sewer used this turn, went all the way back here to spend his time happily claiming their ammo while watching the Batman Who Laughs do his work over here. So a couple of activations now, Agent 3 hopped the wall here to get away from the Batman who laughs, ended his movement next to the surgering here, apologies that one of these trees is in the wrong place incidentally, it got knocked over. Anyway, the carbine op for the militia activated next, it was imparting pings because of the intervening trees but he could see Agent 3. So he took a shot, full rate of fire, 5, um, he whiffed spectacularly on his hip rolls and then what was left got pinged off so he was ineffective that turn sadly. So it's um, back over to the Raven and the Bold. They've still got Agent 1, the Arkham Guard and I think that's it. Agent 1 activated and shot her pistol at rate of fire 3 into the cybernetic brute for 2 blood and 2 stun. The militia activated the shield mercenary militia person who was back here. He didn't have quite enough movement to make it into base to base with the contraband to contest it sadly. So that's as things stand. All that's left now is the Arkham Guard who has a choice of targets up there on the roof. Let's see who he decides to go after. I think he's going to take out the Cybernetic Brute, but we'll assess the situation and see. See how this battle round, the Arkham Guard up there did indeed fire at the Cybernetic Brute. He rolled horrifically. All that got added to the damage that was already there, which was 2 and 2, was 2 more stun from just a scratch. The Cybernetic Body having a minus 1 to damage rolls helped or whichever one it rule is that he has that does that tough skin, sturdy, something like that. He has a rule that makes damage rolls one worse, so it was wounding on threes rather than twos. 
So bad roll for the Arkham Guard up there. He is alive on one Endurance now, the Cybernetic Brute, so he might actually get to use that Fear Gas dispenser he has next turn. We'll see, we'll be back in a second though for recovery and recap. At the end of Battle Round 2 got a couple of things to correct as well, but the Medical Militia member did not wake up, the Cybernetic Brute did not recover any stun, Agent 3 did recover the one stun he had on him. Uh, in terms of things to correct, the Carbine user was back there, he shot, his gun doesn't have aim so he was free to move, so he moved into contact with the Wayne Tech. The Wayne Tech is another objective where it is the player who controls, not the owner who controls. Very likely on turn 1, one of Scarecrow's crew could have been in touch with that to get a, a controlling two victory points on that turn. It's uh, too long has passed now to know for sure to remember if they had the movement to make that possible. Either way, this turn though, the Carbine Militia member did indeed claim the Wayne Tech for two victory points. At the end of the game, if there's a difference of only two victory points, then we'll consider a draw to be safe, I guess. But in terms of other victory points, Scarecrow obviously holding the ammo for three victory points. The Brave and the Bold knocked out a henchman for one victory point. Got another two victory points from the Contraband, and Catwoman is down here claiming the Titan. So that's as things stand. Apologies for that again. So this is the confusing part with some objectives that are owning player or controlling player. It would have been helpful if they were just all following one rule, but obviously variety is the spice of life. Anyway, very likely the Militia's getting first activation here. Let's see what happens. Yep, Militia's getting first activation in Battle Round 3. Perhaps a poor choice of first activation in Battle Round 3 for the Militia. They activated the Missile Launcher person, almost point blank. He shot a missile <laughs> at the Catwoman, and the hit roll missed. The way explosive stuff works is you roll for hit as normal, then it's an automatic uh, wound on anything covered, well you know you still have to roll for a wound, sorry but it denies pings, but you still have to hit with it and he did not. Definitely a mistake there made with activations, the cybernetic brute should definitely have been the one to activate because he's now dead. The Arkham guard up on the roof there activated, he shot his assault rifle, did six blood and removed the cybernetic brute as a casualty. Which next activated the Batman who laughs and he moved in to try and close in on this Agent 3 and take him out. Sadly he only did one blood and one stun. It has not been a good showing for the Batman who laughs again this time around it being on the table. He had five attacks this time. His first roll was four twos and a one. Luckily he has handy so he re-rolled them. Uh, only missed with one on the re-roll. Uh, this agent gets three defense dice, which he had ready, and that negated another bunch of attacks. Then he failed his wind rolls on all but one hit. So just very exceptionally unlucky. And uh, he did recover one stun, this Arkham, uh, not Arkham Guard, sorry, Agent 3. So he only had one blood still on his card, so now he's up to two blood, one stun in total, with five endurance max. Agent 3 activated next, and his plan had been to flee through the sewers, however he had to lose a counter from the damage the Batman Who Laughs dished out to him, so he didn't have enough left, because he had them all in defence, to do that, so he did the next best thing, he hopped the wall, and is now claiming the Titan, hopefully allowing Catwoman to make a swift escape, we shall see. The Shield Militia activated next, he moved up to the Contraband to claim it, and swung at Agent 1, did 2 stun, which took her over her limit, so she is now knocked out on the floor giving a victory point to the Militia side. Red Hood activated and moved up next to the ammo to claim it for the Brave and the Bold side. He shot with Rate of Fire 1 into the Rocket Launcher Merc Militia member up here. Did one blood, one stun, which was enough to take him to knockout status because he already had one blood, one stun and he has four endurance. He also kept one counter in special though, so he could do takedown, which is the rule where if he knocks out a model, he can instantly spend the one special to make it a casualty, just to execute him on the floor. So that's two victory points gained for the Brave and the Bold and another Militia member down and out. Scarecrow activated not to just to sit on his ammo, obviously, to get the three victory points. So then Batman activated, he arrested the Medic for one movement, one special, and then he moved as close as he could over to the centre here. He threw his Batlings at the shield operative, despite facing the other way, they, their class is having a 360 degree of movement, so presumably the shield ping should still have applied. So they just pinged off his shield and did nothing. But he is obviously bearing down on the middle there. Last activation in this battle round for the militia was the carbine wielding militia member. He shot at Agent 3, did 4 blood and killed him. So he, that's another henchman made a casualty plus knocked out, so that's 2 victory points. Catwoman is the last person to go for this battle round and that does put her in a difficult position of whether she wants to hold the Titan, whether she wants to attack the Batman who laughs or run away from him. We'll be back in a second to see what was decided. As we pan round dramatically here, Catwoman opted to stand and fight. She manipulated the Titan container to get a dosage of it. 
and then she shot Rate of Fire 3 with her last remaining magazine, so she's out of ammo now. Into the Batman Who Laughs, who took two blood and two stun. Also worth pointing out the Arkham Guard has expended all his ammunition. The Carbine Op, I think, has one shot left. Red Hood has at least one shot left, but ammo is running sparse all over the battlefield now. So we'll be back in a second with a recovery and recap. So then the battle round, the Batman Who Laughs recovered one stun. The Agent 1 police officer did not wake up, so she's still unconscious. As far as victory points gained, the militia hold their ammo, they hold the Wayne Tech for two, which also gave the Carbine Op power armor for the next turn. They hold the contraband, however, it was a one on the result, which meant that the shield militia member took one blood damage. They knocked out slash killed the Agent 3 for two victory points there as well. The Brave and the Bold finally hold their ammo down here for three. They took out two henchmen that turn. The uh, the med well the medic was arrested after being pre previously knocked out, and the rocket launcher militia member was knocked out and then instantly casualted by the Red Hood. So uh, the Raven and Bold are still quite comfortably ahead, especially now that they've got hold of their ammo. It's going to be very tough for the militia to come back from this, I feel. Uh, they could do it though, depending on how things go. Let's see who is getting first activation in the next battle round. It will be the militia. The Batman who laughs got us started here in the battle round. We're up to four, right? And, uh... Five attacks on Catwoman, who is defense five with four defense dice, still managed to get two blood, two stun, and a knockdown through. Also, I guess this is a good chance to double check if we've been doing this correctly. So, as you accumulate damage, you lose one counter for every two of any, well, two damage counter. It doesn't need to be blood or stun. And the rulebook does say you immediately lose a counter. So, presumably, because the defense dice get used up in the act of defending, they have to come off of the any counters remaining that haven't been spent. So for Catwoman, she had four defense dice and two attack dice, but she's taken two times two damage, so she has to lose two counters. Does that mean she literally can't do anything now on her activation? Is that how that works? Or just because you spent the defense counters, do they still count as being applied there, and thus you can just deduct them from that? Because that doesn't seem right, because then that just means you're, you're basically avoiding the penalty until next battle round. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, let us know. But either way, that's the damage she's taken. We're going to count it as she can't really do anything because at best she could spend one of her attack counters to stand up and then swing once at the Batman who laughs. So that's not really going to do anything anyway. Christian Bale Batman activated next. He moved right up to the contraband and de dealt six stun to the shield using militia member to knock him out. He didn't even need the damage he already had because he's only got four endurance. He then also, because he is counted as still being a base to base, just on the floor unconscious, he's just sprawled out like that for drama. Uh, he still had one movement and one special left over, so he has arrested him to make him a casualty instantly. So things are not looking good for the militia here, so things are going much quicker now. Just going to wrap up the rest of the activations for battle round four. Scarecrow over here activated and had to stand still just to claim the ammo. He also doesn't particularly want to get into a fight. The Arkham Guard that had been up there, he's out of ammo, so he backed up, used the sewer grating, popped up here to claim the ammo, thus freeing Red Hood, who then moved up. He couldn't, he didn't have enough in movement to close the gap entirely to contest the Wayne Tech. He did, however, shoot and did one blood, one stun to the Carbine Op, who also just stood there because he used all his ammo as well. The free shot on the lamppost, then he shot once to no effect to Agent 3, and then once again to Agent 3 and killed him. So now we're up to the recovery phase for this battle round. So at the end of battle round four, nobody recovered from stun, uh, nobody specifically being the Batman who laughs and Catwoman, and also the Carbine Op. In terms of victory points gained, Scarecrow has the ammo, Scarecrow has the Wayne Tech, so that's three and two respectively. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that is it. They're thin on the ground. The Brave and the Bold got the contraband, but the result was a two, so that's no points. They have their own ammo down here for three. They have another, yeah, there was another arrest. The S.H.I.E.L.D. militia member was arrested, so counts as a casualty for points there. And uh, I think that's it. Oh, and the, and the rocket launcher up was, oh no, wait, that was, that was last turn. Either way, it's still counted. So, moving on, it's even Stevens who's going to get the penultimate turns first activation. These are going to be very quick turns, incidentally, it's, it's been a bit of a massacre here. And the Brave and the Bold will be going first. 
Catwoman stood back up and decided to stay and fight because she didn't really have enough counters to get away because it would be impaired movement to get over the wall, let alone get to and use the Sir Green. And the Batman Who Laughs can reassign his counters if he needs to using Trickster to catch up to anyone who's running away. She had three attacks, she launched them at him and did no damage at all. So in retaliation, the Batman Who Laughs activated and attacked Catwoman, did one blood, one stun plus a crit, so an extra stun on the collateral die. With the damage she'd already accumulated, she is knocked out. She's lucky she didn't get made a casualty, otherwise they would have ate her. Also, just pointing out something that was missed earlier in the game, the Batman Who Laughs, his weapon is the gaggle of rabid robins he keeps around him. They actually have the protective rule, so they work like a shield. So when she shot him when he was in the open over here, he still would have got the bonus additional ping roll that a protective weapon imparts. So he should have had a chance to negate some of the damage that he took. It's probably not going to make a difference, but it is something we spotted that we missed. Uh, but we're just going to let it roll as it happened and move on. So the Red Hood activated next. He moved up and just went into melee with his dual pistols and did four stun, knocking out the Carbine Militia member and thus putting the Militia in an unattainable situation, unfortunately. So even though we're one turn or one full turn away, the Militia are going to concede here uh, because Scarecrow's just going to have to stay next to the ammo to try and stay in the race. The Batman who laughs at best, he'd be able to take out a henchman possibly, or even that in one remaining turn, or Red Hood might get lucky and take him out. So that's where we're calling it. We'll be back though with the final recap, minus one final turn. So keeping in mind that the Militia have conceded, so it's a brave and the bold victory regardless, but in that turn, the Militia got three victory points for holding the ammo with Scarecrow, three victory points for knocking out Catwoman because she's a free agent, the Brave and the Bold got three victory points for the ammo, they got a six on the contraband which is another three victory points, and the Red Hood now holds the Wayne Tech for two victory points. But uh, as, as pointless as it is, the, the scorers were roughly saying, what was it, 27 and 30? So only a difference of three, but technically uh, the Militia would have retreated for how many people they'd lost. As far as bonus objectives for the scenario goes, no leader was downed. It was very unlikely either Batman or Scarecrow would go down with one turn remaining, so that's points that would go out of the way. And as far as 50% of rep taken off the table as casualties, the majority of this list is covered by Scarecrow plus the Batman who laughs. That's over half the, the rep right there, so the other scenario objective did not get fulfilled either. But either way, Brave and the Bold victory. That was a fun match. The Militia got a little bit stomped, unfortunately. Not sure how they could have avoided that uh, from happening the way it did. I guess maybe not charging up the middle knowing the assault rifle was bearing down on them. There was some unlucky... And the, the Foolish not activating Cybernetic Brute as the first activation of Battle Round 2, I think it was. Could have taken out Agent 1 then. Probably wouldn't have made massive difference. Would have helped remembering as well which objectives are player-owned and which ones are player... Or well, the person who took them, or just any player in base-to-base -base with them, are bad on that. But still, fun match. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be back with a new table next time, showing off some more scenery and some hopefully more miniatures that we've painted, working on them in the background. Thank you very much for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed, and see you next time. Ta-ta for now.